That's your gap hoodie, is that right? That's you, who are you shooting at? Don't, don't. All right, now back it up again, uh, Miss Iris, if you would. Back it up for Justin getting out of the car. All right, who's the second person here, the guy on the driver's side? It just. He's got the uh, smaller handgun, is that right? Yeah, the bad, bad, bad baseball, hey, bad pro baseball. You're firing this crazy thing. What you see, what are you feeling? I want to feel nothing at the time. I ain't going to let it, I ain't going to feel nothing at the time. I was just trying to get some money. Trying to get some money? Bet you probably would have wasted on Oxycodone and ecstasy. You shot that gun a bunch? Right in there? Right then and there. Yeah, I can tell you how many times I shot out. Aiming for Dolph? Oh, aiming for Dolph. Was he able to uh, say anything to y'all or was he able to run or get away at all? I went close up on him, I was shooting through the leg. Okay. I saw him standing by the window, I just got out of star shooting. All right. You can proceed until Justin shoots. There with the handgun. Who's that? It just. All right, you proceed. All right, you can stop right here. This is Dolph's brother, Marcus. Did you know that he shot back at y'all? I ain't noticed until we pulled up. It was a bullet hole in my side window. And go, I told Jason, I'm like, man, I'm eating. He was like, I'm eating too. So I see, I'm hit right on my leg. And I see a bullet hole in my sweater. So we driving out, he was saying he was here. I'm talking to him, making sure we on Rick, making sure he's straight. I'm like, you all right? He's like, yeah, I'm straight, I'm straight. But the bullet head went in my arm, and it was a bullet in my back. Let's, I'm gonna back up. Uh, you and Justin here are running to the white Mercedes, is that right? Right. You get in what side of the car? I get on the passenger side. And Justin gets back in the driver's side? Yeah, he gets back in the driver's side. Y'all get in the car. We can watch the rest of the, of the video here. Did y'all see Marcus getting a second gun from his car? No, uh -huh. but when we pulled out, and, and I knew it was shots back, I was finna shoot back, but it was too many cars coming, and I didn't just want to hit no anybody, so I didn't shoot back. Because Marcus was shooting at y'all as y'all were leaving from down here, is that right? Yeah. Uh, and you would be in the car at this point? Yeah, we was in the car. Looking backwards? Yeah, I, I was looking back, but we, we had, like, how we were driving. Like, how he was driving, he was all the way on the other side, but, you know, so I ain't want to just shoot back. Mm -hmm. So the shots, all the shots that you fired were the ones we saw right here uh, with Dolph, is that right? Yeah. Uh, and Justin too? Yeah. All right, so y'all didn't shoot back at Marcus as y'all were nah, driving. Shoot, baby, yeah. You uh, say you got shot in the shoulder? Yeah, I got hit in my shoulder, in my, in my upper arm. In the upper arm, shoulder area, your, of your right and, and your leg. And you realize you had been shot once you got in the car? Yeah, once I got in the car. Um, could you still have... Uh, a scar from when you got shot uh, in the arm, is that right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, now I got him to step down and display this to the jury real quick. Come on, Mr. Smith. Turn sideways here. Just walk down this way. Backwards toward the wheels. All right, you and Justin jump back in the car. You've been hit in the shoulder uh, my leg. and in the leg. 
Justin may or may not have been hit. But said yeah, something. he got scraped on his back. Scraped on the back. All right, what now? Uh, we went back on Bradley Street. Did y'all go to Bradley Street slow or fast? Nah, we went back fast. We went back fast. We went back fast. We went trying to get caught. So he caught gave me the keys to the expedition. So he called you? the beans. Who, who gave you the keys to the expedition? Justin gave me the keys to the expedition. Okay. So I moved the truck out of the way and he pulled the beans in the yard. Okay. So the, the expedition, was it parked in the driveway of Bradley? Yeah, we parked in the driveway. Yeah. And he gives you the keys to the expedition? Yeah. You get inside to move it? Yeah. And then where does he put the Mercedes? He put it like right there where the, big, where the expedition in the front yard. Okay, so the front driveway area yeah. of Bradley, is that right? Right. Uh, what do you do next? Uh, we jumped in the expedition. We was on our way to the gas station with FaceTime Juke to let them know they was out work. Who FaceTime Juke? Just had FaceTime Juke. Spelling out dog, you know what I'm saying? Let them know that he's correct. So on November 17, 2021, at 1223 of 6 p.m., Justin Johnson receives an incoming call from his mother, and that duration is zero, and that time frame was significant for me and the investigators because that was at the same time frame that the homicide was being committed. And no durations, I think I just said before, nobody picks up, no voicemail, just no, yeah, no, no connection. No. And they actually had an abnormal completion code, which indicates like if you look at the service codes, that it had some kind of network interruption that can mean nothing significant, but essentially he never picked up or the call might have not gone through. 12.25 p.m. directly uh, murder time frame or after, is that correct? Correct. Uh, 12.25.40, Justin Johnson places an outgoing call to Anthony Mims, and it's got a two-second duration, which appears probably to go unanswered. This is right after the homicide. Correct. Who's Anthony Mims? It's Big Joe. One of the, this is like the number two on CMG record label. And how's Big Jook identified in Justin Johnson's phone? Uh, under Jook. That's Jook. Yes. Okay, so here is 12.26.50 p.m. on November 17, 2021, and it's a FaceTime audio like. So this is an actual identity lookup service. So what this was, essentially this was pulled from the file system. And so this isn't the actual FaceTime communication. And this, because those were deleted. And so they were missing from the call logs. You can see though in the file system, the actual phone will access certain things. And so the only thing that was remaining, because you can't, you can delete and move things. You can, operate and manipulate your physical phone, but you can't get rid of anything on the file system. It, it determines when it's appropriate to get rid of it. And so the only thing we found was that there was some type of application with the FaceTime audio that was accessed by FaceTime, and then it identified telephone number 901-692-2767, which we were able to uh, identify to be Anthony Mims' telephone number. So this is about a minute after the, the call that we just saw. That's correct. 